What do you find yourself thinking about when someone asks you to consider or explain or offer an opinion on Bach's B minor mass? I realize that's not an everyday question, but it is a question that pops into my mind with some frequency. And for me, the answer is not hard at all. For me, this is a classic desert island disc. And in fact, I'm quick to say that if I could only have one piece of music on my desert island, it would be Bach's B minor mass. And let me take a moment to explain for you why that choice is easy by looking at the, just the first couple of movements of the B minor mass with you. Of course, um, if, if I don't know how well you know the B minor mass, but it is an, ab an absolute tour de force of, through the greatest uh, music in Bach's entire life output. It's 27 movements, and those 27 movements, Bach chose the movements based on phrases of the Latin mass that were most important to him. He could have easily made this the overall setting like most composers, five, six, seven, eight movements long. But he, he divided, he's made many subdivisions so he could focus on bits of text that he particularly found interesting for whatever reason. In those 27 movements, Bach spanned all forms, all voices, and all instruments available in Bach's world at the time. You could argue, you could equivocate with that by saying, well, their opera was emerging, um, you know, and so on and so forth. But barring those sort of just emerging new forms and developments, Bach used everything available to him in the mature Baroque. Now, Bach himself assembled this late in his life, and he finished it in about 1749. He died in 1750. We choose Bach's death date, 1750, to mark the end of the Baroque period. And so he finished this just one year before his death. And um, I find interesting some of the large sweeping thoughts that Bach had in this piece. I think he was searching for not only what he considered um, a, a comprehensive culmination of his life work, but also a compelling statement about something that he considered to be truisms and how they were true throughout time. So one of the biggest distinctions in the B minor mass um, is, the, is the juxtaposition of what Bach called the old church style and the new style. We think of the new style uh, very quickly in music like Bach's Brandenburg concertos. And we think of the old style very quickly in pieces like the generation before Bach, Palestrina and motets and so on and so forth. So the piece begins with a curie. And this curie is largely in the old style. Um, and I'd like to show you this opening tune because the opening curie is a rather monumental movement, and I find it deeply, deeply moving in a very evocative way. Um, a couple of years ago, I was in London, and I visited the Church of St. Martin in the Fields, which is on Trafalgar Square, adjacent to the British Museum there. And inside that church, I had a lovely concert, but what stuck in my mind actually more than the concert was a was a statue I saw and it was a modern style sort of like a Giacometti um, kind of statue elongated and it showed um, somebody kind of plaintively reaching up asking for mercy from the Lord and that's what Bach does in this melody the opening tune goes um, in these little tentative gestures up uh, if I show you just the those gestures it's So again, it goes. And then, ever reaching 
higher. And in between those higher gestures are these bows, these um, humbling bows within the music. Uh, as we ask for mercy, we do it in a modern, in a modest, beseeching way. We don't demand it. We're, after all, we're not Beethoven. We plead for it. So if we ask, if each time we go up, we go down. So together we get. That music is enormously effective, and I think this idea of of kind of pleading and doing it humbly. In, I've lived with this piece for many, many years, decades, and for me, every time, every time I do the piece, this feeling of that was what Bach had in mind becomes more powerful. And I invite you to consider that feeling um, as you listen to this opening curiae. <laughs> 